Hello and welcome back to the Second Chance Loot Channel here on YouTube. I'm happy to see that you decided to stop by to watch this video presentation. Thank you. In today's video presentation, I would like to share part two of an article series that I wrote in August of 2007, nearly seven years ago. I create video presentations for individuals to learn better through watching and listening. As you listen to part two being read and questions come to mind, please send those questions to me. All questions are good questions. In the event that you'd like to leave a comment, I would also love to hear from you. Please leave a comment through the YouTube comment section and I'll get back with you. To read the article, I'll put my glasses back on and bring up the article. The article, Having an Invisible Disability, The Consequence of Denying Reality, Part 2. Welcome back to Second Chance to Live. Yesterday, I introduced the concept of consequences for denying my reality. Today, I'm going to share what I've learned. For many years, I was encouraged to buy into a belief system that would not or could not consider the possibility that the injury to my brain contributed to the difficulties I encountered when interacting with some people in social situations. Consequently, I was frequently criticized for my inability to get along with people without factoring into, into the discussion, per se, the damage to my brain. The sad reality created by a lack of acceptance concerning my invisible disability resulted in my being blamed, shamed, and in many instances made the scapegoat or made to be the scapegoat for matters that were out of my control. Because I believe that I created my sad reality for many years by internalizing the difficulties of being a uh, inference that there was something wrong with me, I lived in a state of guilt and shame. I did not believe that I merely made mistakes, but that I was a mistake. I had an overdeveloped sense of responsibility and spent much of my time saying I am sorry. My sixth grade teacher, English teacher, had me do an exercise by take going home and writing out on a piece of paper 500 times I am sorry. He did this in an attempt to get me to stop saying I'm sorry. The exercise in writing those words did not help rid me of my sense of shame. Consequently, I continued to assume the position of a scapegoat because I was led to believe that I was responsible for the restlessness, irritability, and discontent in my world. I continued to believe that I was responsible responsible for people, places, and things, even though they were out of my control, until I reached an emotional bottom when the relationship with my fiancé ended in 1991. In response to the breakup, I started to look for solutions. As I looked for solutions, precious answers, answers were revealed to me. I found that when I became sick and tired of being sick and tired, I was willing to be honest with myself. I had no idea at the time how much good would come out of the ashes of my pain of the relationship breaking up. I found as I was honest with myself, my ability to change the way I related to myself changed forever. My inability, or I should say my ability to love and respect myself began when I was able to come out of hiding. And here in this particular article, I have another link to an article series by the name Who, Are, Who Am I? In this article series, I talk about boundaries and the need to have boundaries. I would encourage you to read this particular article series by coming to this particular article and clicking on the blue link. Although shame and guilt left, left me accusing or defending myself for many years, as I began to accept the child that God unconditionally loved, I was able to find and integrate parts of myself that I previously discarded in the process of protecting my wounded child. 
Over time, I have grown in my ability to accept myself and live an empowered life as a man with an invisible disability. My circumstances, I have found, are not meant to keep me down, but they're meant to build me up. Because I know that everything, excuse me, because I know that with everything there is a learning curve, I am determined to live life on life's terms. Again, because I know that with everything there is a learning curve, I have determined to live life on life's terms. And I also have another link to an article at the end of this particular article, which is a blue link also, and its title is The Art of Change. This is the end of this uh, two-part article series. I want to thank you for being here. I hope the information has been helpful to you. I would encourage you, if it has, that you would share this article series with your family and friends so that it may give them insight into what they are struggling for. And please subscribe to my channel. I'd like to be able to, to be sending you more video presentations as they are made and uploaded to YouTube. Currently, I have 218 video presentations uploaded to YouTube, and the list of those are on my website at Second Chance to Live at secondchancetolive.org. There's a sitemap in which you can click on sitemap for my YouTube video presentations. Click on that, and it will bring you to a page. In that page, there is a list of all my different video series, you can click on those links and the links will bring you to the video series on YouTube. I'll say so long for now. Have a great day and God bless both you and your family. Before I go, let me encourage you with this. Please do not give up on yourself, a loving God of your process because more will be revealed in time. The pieces of the puzzle will come together in the correct order and at the right time for us. I'll say so long for now. Have a great day and God bless both you and your family. So long now.